Hello everyone and welcome to another day in the life video. I've made a couple of these videos before and they've always been fairly popular plus at this stage of development there really isn't that much actual development left to show you. I'm so close to finishing Equinox now that all that's really left to do is just balancing and optimizing and a bit of marketing and that doesn't really make for a very exciting video but I have still been getting a few suggestions for improvements and bug fixes and I've been saving them all up so that I could do them all today and have one day full of game development to show you in this video. So I've got up nice and early to try and make the most of the day. It's quarter to seven at the moment and uh, I've got a long to-do list here of all the things that I want to try and get done. So I'm just going to quickly have some breakfast and then get straight to work. So first up today I want to try and fix one of the main complaints that people have when they try out Aquilinox and that is to do with the selective breeding system. So when you're trying to selectively breed a plant or an animal to have a certain trait, you have to check through the traits tab of many different entities to find one that has the traits that you want, so that you can then selectively breed it. And that involves a lot of clicking on entities, then clicking on their traits tab, checking if it has the one that you want, and that can be a little bit frustrating. So what I want to implement first today is to have an option that will display the traits above an entity's head so that you can very quickly get an overview of which entities have which traits. And first up, as you can see, I've just been implementing a way to display text above an entity's head. And um, to do this, I just convert the entity's 3D position into a 2D position on the screen and then render the text there. And I've also just made it so that it only shows the text above entities that are in a certain range of the camera. And as the entities go in and out of that range, the text fades nicely in and out. So I've just finished tying up this new text displaying system with the traits of the entities and I think this will make the selective breeding system a lot more convenient. So for example if I wanted to selectively breed a very fast rabbit I can go to the traits tab of any of the rabbits here and then next to the traits I've added this new button which for now just has a placeholder icon and if I click on the button next to the speed trait you can see that all the rabbits now have their speed trait displayed above them so I can very quickly have a look around and find the rabbit with the fastest speed trait and I can then use that rabbit for selective breeding. Also down at the bottom of the screen here I've added this new panel which just shows which trait is currently being displayed and there's a button here which allows you to turn off the trait displaying. So that's the first update of the day pretty much done. I'm just going to take a quick break now and go for a nice morning run by the sea and then I'll be back to do some work on some sound effects. It's past 11 now and I've just been trying to create a new eating sound effect for some of the animals in Aquilinox and I've not really done much sound design before but I had an idea that if I collected some dead leaves from outside and then scrunched them up in front of my microphone perhaps it would sound like a sort of realistic eating sound. Um, so I just tried that out in the game and it kind of works. I mean, it kind of sounds like they're eating a packet of chips and not grass, so I might try and improve it at some point, but for now it's at least nice to have some sort of sound effect when the animals are eating. Next up today, just a very quick simple update. Some of the newer trees that I've been adding into the game recently didn't have any particle effects, so for the larger ones I've just been adding a nice falling leaf effect. Lastly this morning I've just been going through a long list of bugs that people have been reporting to me and I've just been fixing them. And just to give you an idea of what kind of bugs they are, I'll give you some examples now. So for the wolves I'd messed up their species file and I'd accidentally added the liked species information twice and this was causing the game to crash when you tried to check the environmental satisfaction of a wolf. On displays with different sizes the background image in the main menu was getting squashed or stretched. There were also a few colour issues to do with entities, so for example if you want to unlock a sunflower you need to breed a yellow poppy, but yellow wasn't one of the possible colours for the poppy, so it was impossible to unlock the sunflower. And uh, also the bees were sometimes making their hives underwater, which obviously shouldn't happen. So I just went through all of those and fixed them, mostly very simple fixes. 
but now I think it's time to stop for some lunch and I haven't made pasta in a while so I'm gonna do that today. Back to work this afternoon now and I'm just setting everything up for the game to be translated which was going to happen a couple of months ago and then obviously I got my illness um, but I'm just setting it all up again now and a lot of people have offered to help with translations which is amazing so I found this website here which should make it easier to crowdsource the translations basically I uploaded the language file for Equilinox to the website so all the text for Equilinox is now here and then I can send a link to anyone who wants to help and they'll be able to see it all and fill in as many or as few translations as they want and there are also options for proofreading and stuff like that. So I've never tried it before but hopefully it should work. I'm going to try it first with German and then if that all goes fine then I'll do it for the other languages as well. So sorry for the delay for everyone who offered to help a couple of months ago but I'll be sending you all an email about it in the next week. Next today I've been looking into how I can optimise the rendering of the terrain in Equinox because a lot of the rendering code for the game I wrote almost three years ago now and I've learned a lot and improved a lot since then so there are quite a few things that I think could be optimised or improved now and um, I'm probably not going to actually do those implementations today because it's probably a bit of a longer update so I'll do it another day but I've just been planning out what changes I'm going to make. So for example, for the terrain, it's to do with how much data I'm using to represent a vertex. So for example, I'm currently using three floats to represent a color, which is 12 bytes, whereas I could be representing a color easily with just four bytes. So I'll be making changes like that in the next few days. Half past five now, and I've just been fixing a few models in the game. Uh, for example, I noticed that the normals for the deer's ears were the wrong way round, so the ears were appearing inside out, which was a bit weird, so I just fixed that. And I've also just been having a look into how I could improve the clouds in Equilinox, because a lot of people have mentioned from the videos that the clouds in the game don't look the best. Um, quite a few people have said that they should be a bit bigger, which I tried, um, but then I found that they often get in the way of the camera, which is a bit annoying. Um, I guess I could make them go transparent when the camera gets too close to them or something. And then also quite a few people have mentioned that there should be more variation, because at the moment all the clouds just use the same model. So I was just having a go at trying to make some more cloud models, but I found it surprisingly difficult to make good looking clouds. Um, so that didn't go very well. So. I don't know, if you guys have any suggestions on how I could improve the clouds in the game, um, then let me know and I'll see if I can implement it before release. Last up this afternoon I just went back to the trait update that I was working on this morning and tidied it up a bit. So the UI panel at the bottom of the screen now slides in and out when you open and close it, which I think looks a little bit nicer. And I also just found a new icon for this button um, and I think it works because you're kind of looking for the traits or having a look at the traits or searching for a trait, I don't know. Um, if you have a better idea for what this icon should be then do let me know. But for now I need to stop, um, I'm going to meet some friends in a bit who are staying at a campsite not far from here, it's about 20 minutes by bike so I'm going to go and cycle up by the coast, go and meet them, grab something to eat and then hopefully if the weather stays nice see the sunset over the sea. It is coming up to 11 o'clock now and I was just about to finish off of the day just doing a bit of editing but I noticed that the shadows in the game look a little bit harsh in the morning and in the evening when the light should be a bit softer. They were still very hard dark shadows so I wanted to quickly change that to make the shadow darkness change depending on the time of day and this was very quick to implement. I just added one more uniform variable to the shaders and then varied it depending on the time of day. So now you can see that in the morning the shadows are quite faint um, and then as the sun rises and the day goes on the shadows get harder and shorter. 
and then in the evening the shadows get once again longer and a bit fainter. So that's pretty much going to be it for today, I'm going to get to bed now, but before I finish I need to give a massive thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were The Fifth Blue Sky, Rene Dam, Miguel Diaz Rivas, Claudio Dimitri, Josh Gill, Cole Fodoraro, Charlie Quigley, Austin Adamson, George Angelopoulos, Danny D, Matt Du, Andrew Witt, Caffeine Coda, Clouded Dreams, Marek Mikolajczyk, Timothy Gibbons, Michel de Schmidt, Wolfgang, Dylan Thompson, Jeffrey Gaunsvard, Alberto Spina, Sean McCrory, Michael Merck, Benjamin Fuller and Alexander Chavez. So a huge thank you to all of you guys and of course to everyone else supporting me on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys so much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.